Hello everyone, my name is Michael and welcome back to another episode in this Puppeteer tutorial series. In this episode, we will show how we can deploy our Puppeteer script in Versal for free. So yeah, let's get it started. By the way, I'll be showing both GitHub and Versal CLI method. So first we will set up the script and then you will be able to click the timestamps below to select your method. So yeah, let's get started. So in my example, I'm using Express. So I'm basically creating a server and then I create an API endpoint, which we can call in order to run our script. But there is a few things I want to point out. So first of all, we initialize Chrome and Puppeteer, so just those two values. And then we say if process.env.aws underscore lambda underscore function underscore version. So let me explain what that is. So before I do that, Versal is running in AWS Lambda. Basically, Versal is using AWS Lambda servers to run your applications. So we are able to get AWS Lambda environment variables. And basically we do that to check if we are in production or not. So here is what we are saying. So if we are in production, we will use Chrome AWS Lambda and then also Puppeteer Core. Otherwise, we will use plain Puppeteer. Why we are doing that? Well, because locally, like by default, you are using Puppeteer. But in production, because it's running on Lambda functions, first of all, we have a limitation on the size. And as I remember, it is 50 megabytes. And Puppeteer takes way more than that. It takes about 350 megabytes. So there is no way we can use Puppeteer. And that's because Puppeteer comes with a version of Chrome built in to node modules. So that's, that takes a lot of space. But Puppeteer Core is basically the lightweight version of Puppeteer, which I will explain a bit. So here is what we are doing now. We are creating an endpoint. And then we say again, if we are in production, we will use some custom settings. So first of all, we will use the args that we get from Chrome AWS Lambda, the arguments basically. And basically the most important thing is right here, await chrome.executable path. So basically we use that to fetch the Chrome that AWS Lambda has built in. So we are not installing Chrome, but basically AWS Lambda comes by default with a version of it. Another thing I want to point out is if we go back on, if we go on package.json, as you will see here, I'm currently using Chrome AWS Lambda version six, same for the Puppeteer core, because the newer versions are not currently working. And also, if you see right here, I have installed Puppeteer but in my developer dependencies. And we do that so Versal doesn't download Puppeteer, which, we, which it will do if we have it on dependencies. Another thing I want to mention is that we are using Node version 14. And then finally, we have the Versal.json. This is what allows us to run Node. So here what we are saying is, Basically, we are specifying the source, which is our file name, the index.js, basically the main file which we want to run. And also here we are saying Versal use node, like use the node that Versal provides. Basically, what you have to do is copy the Versal.json and make sure you replace the name of your file right here. Also make sure right here on the dot killing nor to put the dot .versal and also node modules. That's useful for GitHub later. So yeah, let's go ahead and see how we can use it with Versal CLI. 
you can search in on Google so you can say Vercel CLI download and what you have to do is run npm i g Vercel and this will install Vercel CLI so after you install it and locate your project folder okay so the first thing you have to do is run Vercel by the way I'll show you in a little bit as well every time you make a change on your code you will have to run this command. So Vercel does as prod, does as force, and it will update the code. Okay, so let's run Vercel for the first time. Set up and deploy, yes. Then you choose to which scope you want to upload to deploy it to. Is it an existing project? No. What's your project name? I'll leave it as it is which directory you will have to specify the directory here but if in your terminal you are in your project folder then just hit enter and you are setting up your project by the way here on scope and that's basically what team you are on your Vercel just click enter if you are only have one team as you see I have my team and then I have some other teams that I've been invited to and there we go so what we will do now is copy this url paste it here and then go to slash api endpoint and now after a few seconds there we go the script worked so as you see here what we are doing is we are sending the page title and it is correct we are visiting google so we get for the page title google so yeah this is it on how you can deploy with Vercel. Okay, so let's go on the GitHub method. So what we will do is go to GitHub, create a new repository. Let's say pop it here, Vercel. By the way, I'll be doing a video for Selenium as well. So, okay, next what we will do is run these commands, but with some modifications. So first of all, let's run git init. To initialize a git repository then we will run git add dot and then git commit first commit then we will do git actually let's copy it i said it's pretty long by the way as you saw i skipped the git branch because i didn't want to create a branch i'll just push to master but if you want, you can create a branch, whatever you like. Okay, so let's do that. git push dash u origin master. And there we go. Now the next thing we will do is go back to our Vercel. Then we will do add new. We will create a new project. Okay, so for some reason, at the time of recording, I had an issue where I couldn't connect my own account to Vercel because I had connected another account already and for some reason it didn't let me add my account now what you want to go ahead and do is you will select your account and then search for your repository after you have already added your account by the way and then you will select import and basically you will import your repository but for some reason because I couldn't connect my own account I had to click import third party git repository okay so what i'll go ahead and do is import third party git repository because for some reason it's not connecting my account oh yeah let's go ahead and do that and now whenever you want to make a change what you have to do is run git add dot then you will run git commit as we did before and then finally you will run git push so if i can find it okay basically git push origin master so those three commands is what you run every time you want to update your code and yeah that's it so if we go now in our application and then go to slash api so yeah this is it for the video by the way i'll have the, again the code down in the description so 
I suggest you copy paste it or basically copy paste the the changes that you have to do in your already created script. So if the video was helpful and you enjoyed it, hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell notification so you don't miss any of my other videos. And yeah, by the way, again, this is a series. So if you want to learn more about Puppeteer, you can click somewhere up, up right and you will be able to see the whole series. So yeah, see you in the next video.